Uh, I was looking at the quiz from last week, and Go Formative is terrible at grading. So if you look at it and it says you missed everything, don't trust that yet. I have to go look at everything because you can type the exact same thing that the answer says, and it'll still say uh, no. So, but I do see some of these do have some some problems with them, but uh, I'll go through. I have to go through and manually grade it. So once I do that, then we can look at it. And if you actually have things wrong, I will make comments on there. So if you see I'm making comments on any of your problems, that means I've looked at your problems and it really does need to be, uh, it is really wrong. And we'll see if it's bad enough that anyone needs to do a retake on it. But uh, right now it's saying that like everybody bombed it because it's not really good at grading that. So we won't trust that just yet. We'll get there. So, all right. This week is a B Friday. So that means you guys just have class today and Wednesday. For, the, for those of you whose grades is below 70% on Wednesday, anyhow. And uh, today, we are going to start some new stuff. Uh, let me throw this up on the screen. I didn't say throw up on the screen. That's something different. Uh, let's say throw this up on the screen. So, uh, oh, it looks like we're talking about hexadecimal numbers. Uh, I'm just kidding. This was my programming class. We're not talking about hexadecimal numbers. We are going to talk about radicals. All right, that's better. That's better. That'll be uh, that'll be better than having to go through hexadecimal numbers. So. Base 16 number system, by the way, if you're wondering what a hexadecimal number is. It's base 16. So it uses the numbers 0 through F. Yeah, uh, we won't get into that. All right, let's look at... The parts of a radical, first off, right here. So you have the little N, you have the symbol, and whatever's inside there. So let's give it names. This is the index. These notes are in Google Classroom if you want your own copy. The index is that little number that appears above this. This is the radical. So that's a radical symbol. That little number that appears above is an index. What's under the radical, we call the radicand. Radicand. All right. And if there is no index, if you do not see a number there, it is assumed that it is two, right? That it's a square root. If there's no number there, it's just a square root. We generally only have an index if it's something other than squared, like these below that. See, that doesn't have an index. There's no index there. So we know that's a two. It's the square root of 117. All right. So before we get started on working some of these as examples, we want to talk about the perfect squares, the perfect cubes, and the perfect fourths, because knowing those make this a whole lot easier. So let's talk about our perfect squares. And we're talking about Starting with the numbers 1, 2, 3, let's go all the way to 10 here, 6, 7. All right. So perfect square should be squaring these numbers. So it starts out with 1 because that is the square of 1. If we square 2, we get 4 and then 9, and we square 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared, and then, of course, 10 squared. These are numbers that we're pretty familiar with. We do squares and square roots more frequently than, than these others. But let's look at the perfect cubes. So that's when you take 1 times 1 times 1, and 2 times 2 times 2, and 3 times 3 times 3, and you cube it 3 times. So, it's, again, it's 1. Then there are how many times we multiply one for the fourths, you know, four times four times four times four. I mean, one time, one time, one time, four times. So cubes, if we cube two, that's two times two times two, that's eight. Then you get to 27. When you take four times four times four, 64. You got five times five is 25 times another five is 125. 
6 times 6 is 36, and you take that times 6, you get 216. And then the 7s goes to 343. 8 times 8 times 8 is 512. 9 times 9 times 9 is 729. And then 10 times 10 times 10. So basically, we're just taking these numbers times another 9. You know, 100 times another 10 gives us 1,000. So these are the perfect cubes up through 10. That will be useful for some. Um, and then fourths. So basically, we're taking the cube and multiplying it by another 1 and another 2 and a number 3. So the fourths go to 16, 81, 256, 625, that's 125 times another 5, right? And then 216 times another 6 is 1,296. And then a 7 times uh, the 7 cubed times another 7, that'll be 2,401. And we got 4,096. 65, 61, and finally, a thousand times another 10 is 10,000. So these numbers are useful when we're trying to simplify some radicals down here. So simplifying radicals is what we're looking at here. So simplifying the square root of 117. Well, that is not a perfect square. I mean, because the next one past this, 11 is 121. So that would be 11. So we know it's in between 10 and 11, so that doesn't work. So we need to find something that multiplies by one of these to end up with 117. All right, so let's see. If we if we divide that, let's, let's pull up a calculator just so I can show you a, a method you can use. So let's see. If we start, we don't need to divide it by one. What if we divide it by four? Is that a, is that one of our numbers we can use? Divide by four? No. And we knew four wouldn't work because that's an odd number. It would have to be an even number to be divisible by four. So let's try the next one. 117, let's divide it by nine. 117, divided by nine. That's nine times 13. So if we rewrite this as the square root of 9 times 13, see, we just rewrote it. It's still the same number, but 9 times 13. And that would be, we can take the square root of 9, but the square root of 9 is 3. So that would come outside. So this is the same thing as 3 square roots of 13. Now, generally, if the radical has more than one root, which which this does, because square root of 9 could be 3 or negative 3, if it has more than one root, the radical sign indicates that only the principal or positive root is the one we're going to use. When we're simplifying, we're just going to use the positive number. We know there's a negative 3 that also plays in there, but we're going to just use the positive number for our simplifying. And that's as simple as it gets, because the square root of 13, there's... That's a prime number. There's nothing that could go into that. There's no more perfect squares we can pull out of that. So let's look at this one, 320. All right, so 320. First, we can check, is 320 a perfect square? So if we take uh, right there the square root button, no, that's 17.88. So that's not a perfect square. If we got bigger, it would not hit that one. So let's see, 320, let's divide it by 4. 80, but I think 80 is still a big enough number. Let's try it. Let's try a bigger number here. Let's do 320 divided by 9. Nope, that doesn't work. How about 320 divided by 16? Oh, that's even better. Let's let's say we're going to stop there and then we'll look to see can we simplify this even further. But we know 16 times 20. So let's start with that. 
4 times the square root of 16 times 20. Well, 16 is the perfect square, right? So we know the square root of 16 is another 4. So that means this is the same as 4 times 4, because when it comes out, we have to multiply it by anything that's outside there, times the square root of 20. But the square root of 20 can be simplified, because that's the same thing as, let me erase the 20. That's the same thing as 4 times 5. And 4 is another one of our perfect squares. So 4 times 5. Yeah, make a little x four times five so now we're talking about that's two square root of two so we got four times four times two square roots of five so four times four is 16 times two is 32 so this is 32 square roots of five So knowing that we could have taken another four out of that, that means we probably could have taken a bigger number to start with. We could have taken 320 and divided it by 32. Oh, no, 32 is not one of the ones. 36. No, that didn't work. Four times. What did we pull out of there? We pulled out 16 and four. Oh, 64. So let's do 320 divided by 64. Ah, see, there it is. We could have pulled out a 64 at the very beginning. We could have made this 64 times 5. And then that would have been an 8. 4 times 8 is 32. So there's more than one way to get there. But once it's simplified, you won't be able to pull anything else out of here. Which, you know, square root of 5, 5 is a prime number. Again, it can't simplify any further than that. So let's try another one now looking at cubed roots. This is a cube root. We're going to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see the little three up there. Cube roots are 48. So first of all, is 48 a perfect cube? 1, 8, 27, 60. No, it'd be between there. So that doesn't work. So let's divide 48 by some of our perfect cubes. So if we clear that, we we'll take 48 and divide it by 8 is our first perfect cube. Oh, that works. Six. And six is not a perfect cube because it's between one and eight. So this is the same as two times the cubed root of eight times six. And we know the cubed root of eight. That's two times two times two would be eight. So when we pull that out there, two, and I'll put it in parentheses, make that more clear. 2 times 2, square roots of 6. So it's, oh, I'm sorry, cube roots of 6. 4 cube roots of 6, and that's our answer. That is as simplified as we can make that. 4 cube roots of 6. And if you're not sure, if you get the end, it's like, did I mess that up? Did I do that right? Well, I'll show you. I, Way, way to check that. There's the easiest way to check that. I'm going to open this up because if I open up this calculator on the computer, it shows my history over here. So my history is over there. So clear. All right. So if I take, and this calculator will, if I hit this little shift second button on the computer, it'll do cubed roots. It's got cubed roots right there. So have, let's do better big. Yeah, that's better big. Okay. So if I go to cubed roots and I want the cubed root of 48 cube root times 2. So let me make this smaller again. 7.26. See, 2 times the cube root of 48. For the calculator, I got to do the cube root of 48 first and then multiply it by 2. But it doesn't matter if you take 2 times 3 or 3 times 2, you still get 6, right? Doesn't matter which order we multiply in. So that's about 7.26. Two, six, eight, etc. So that's what the original one equals as a decimal. Let's see what this equals as a decimal. So six, the cubed root of six. Okay, there's the cubed root of six, cube root times four. Oh, look, it's the exact same number. So those are equal to one another. 
And we can check that with a calculator. 2 times the cube root of 48 is the same as 4 times the cube root of 6. So that's a way to verify to ourselves that we didn't mess anything up. And those are equivalent. This is just a simplified version of that one. All right, let's look at the 108. So again, let's start first by seeing what perfect cubes we can pull out of it. 108 is not a perfect cube. See, it's between 64 and 125. So let's bring our calculator back into the picture. And let's see. I'll bring it back. There we go. All right, so 108 divided by, let's try the first one, 8. Nope, that does not go in evenly. So that's not going to be a factor. A does not factor. Let's try 27. 108 divided by 27. Ah, four times. Four times. So we're going to rewrite this as three times the cubed root of 27 times four. 27 times four. Because we just found out that 108 divided by 27 is 4. So 4 times 27 is 108. 27 is a perfect cube. So we can take the cube root of 27. So this will be 3 times 3 times the cube root of 4. Cube root of 4 cannot be simplified. There is no cube root of 4. 3 times 3. So this equals 9 cube roots of four. That is the simplified radical. All right, so when we're simplifying these, we cannot use a decimal. That's not simplifying, that's converting. We're not converting these to a decimal. We are simplifying, simplifying radicals. All right, let's try two more. These are also third roots. And uh, we, we can do some fourth roots on another page. I don't have any on this sample here. So the cube root of negative 250. 250 is not on our list. So let's see what, with cube roots, now let's think about this. Cube roots, normally on a square root, we say, okay, this is an imaginary number, right? Because we can't take the square root of a negative number. We can take the cubed root of a negative number. Because if, if we were taking negative two times negative two times negative two, negative two times negative two is positive four, times another negative two is a negative eight. So the cubed root of negative eight equals negative two. It's not plus or minus two, because that's only square roots have a plus or minus. With a cubed root, if it's a negative under there, it's a negative root if it's a positive it's a positive root so we can negative 250 could be a cubed root so let's see let's start dividing it by our perfect cubes up here 250 all right so 250 divided by the first one's eight no 250 divided by 27 no 250 divided by 64 no, some of you may be ahead of me on this one. Divided by 125, yes, it's two times 125. You may have already picked that up when you look at those numbers up there. 125 times two. So this is the same thing as the cube root of 125. I'm putting it in parentheses so the little dot doesn't confuse. Times two. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a negative 125. Negative 125 times two, because that's a negative 250. So that would be the same thing. Negative 125, that would be a negative five. Negative five times negative five times negative five would equal negative 125. So this would be negative five cube roots of two. So this is the same number as that. It's just simplified. This is a lot easier number to kind of guess what it equals because the square root of two is about 1.4 and we could figure out what, or the cube root of, of that would be even smaller. 
So this is a number that's probably less than seven, somewhere around there. This we're like, I have no idea. All right. Six cube roots of negative two. And you look at that and you're like, cube roots of negative two, we're, we're finished. It can't be simplified anymore. Actually, it can. Because this is the same as six times the cube root of negative one times two. Here, I'm putting parentheses like it. Negative one times two. Since there's a negative inside there, if nothing else, we can simplify that because we can take the cube root of negative one. That's negative one times negative one times negative one. So this would simplify as negative six times the cube root of two. Just a little bit bigger than that number. Okay, so you see how we're doing this? All right. Before we jump down to here, let's look real quick at maybe a fourth root problem. See if I can find a fourth root problem for us to practice with. Um, see if I have anything written down somewhere. Oh, here we go. Let's do the fourth root of 243. Okay, so if we look at our fourth root numbers, 1, 16, 81, 256, 625, 243 is not on that list. Not on that list. So let's divide the 243, yeah, let's take this paper and put it on top of there, by what we know are perfect fourths. So we'll bring our calculator back up, clear that. 243 divided by 16. Nope, that's not a whole number. 243 divided by 81. Three. Okay, so we can rewrite this. This is the same as the fourth root of 81 times three. Because 81 times three. And we know that 81 is a fourth root. That's three times three times three times three. Well, three times three is nine. The other three times three is nine. Nine times nine is 81. So this is equal to three fourth roots of three because this 81 came out. The fourth root of 81 is three. So this simplifies to three fourth roots of three. So fourth roots work just like the third root, you just got to find which of these are inside there and can pull that out. Let's look at what we have down at the bottom. So square roots with variables. If we are having variables in our radicals, so square roots, to pull it out, exponents must be multiples of two, cube roots must be multiples of three, and fourth roots must be multiples of four. So before we get into that, let's review the rules of exponents. If I have x squared times x squared, that equals x times x times x times x. That's x to the fourth. If we have x to the third times x to the third, this is x times x times x times x times x times x. We have six x's being multiplied together. So that's x to the sixth. Same token, x to the fourth times x to the fourth is x times 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 x. So if we multiply x times itself eight times, So the rules of exponents say we can add the exponents together when we have variables that are the same. X to the second plus X to the second. Or times means we can add those, make it fourth. X to the third times X to the third means we can add those and it'd be a six. Add those and it's X to the eighth. When you multiply, multiply it together. If we was adding it together, like X to the third plus X to the third, that's just two X to the thirds. That's different. 
when we're adding is different, but multiplying is this. So if we if we're taking the square root of something or a cube root or fourth root, the square root of x squared we know is just x because x times x equals x squared. But the square root of x to the fourth would be x squared because x squared times x squared equals x to the fourth. If we take the fourth root of x to the eighth, that's x squared. Like what? The fourth root. If I take x squared times x squared times x squared times x squared, that is x to the eighth. Because I get to add all together. Two plus two plus two plus two. So the fourth root of x to the eighth is x squared. You just divide four into eight and see how many you got. Let's let's take it one more step past that. Let's say we had the cubed root of x to the seventh. You're like, but Mr. Brock, x to the seventh doesn't work with three. We have to rewrite it as x to the sixth times x. That's that's x to the seventh. But now we've made it where we can pull out a third cubed root. So what would equal x to the sixth of the cube root? x squared plus x squared plus uh, x squared times x squared times x squared would be x to the sixth. Two plus two plus two. So this comes outside, and we still have that x that stays inside. So it's x squared times the cube root of x. That's what x to the seventh, the cube root of x to the seventh equals, is x squared outside the cube root of x. Just see how many times we can take it out. Three, six, we can take out the six. Multiples of three, multiples of four, multiples of two. That's what they're talking about when they say square root's got to be multiples of two, three, and four. So let's put it all together right here. We have the square root. Both of these are just square roots. They're making it easy on us. Square root of 32 x to the fourth y to the ninth. So first, the square root of 32. 1, 4, 9, 16. Nope, 32 is not there. Goes from 25 to 36. But 16 times 2, that's 32. So we can rewrite this as the square root of 16 times 2. X to the 4th is fine. We're happy with that. X to the ninth won't come out with a square root. It has to be multiples of 2. A Y to the ninth. So we can say Y to the 8th times another y. So which of those have square roots that we can take out? Well, 16 is 4 times 4. x to the 4th and y to the 8th both are perfect squares as well. So those come out. This outside, it's a 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. x to the 4th comes out as x squared, because x squared times x squared is x to the 4th. And y to the 8th comes out as y to the 4th. And we still have left inside 2y. So this simplifies to 4x squared y to the fourth square roots of 2y. All you have to do, if it's a square root, that means this is a 2. Divide the, the 4 by 2, and that's what comes out. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 9 divided by 2 is 4 and a half, right? So the 4 comes out, and the other y has to stay inside. Have to change it to a y to the 8th and a y. So the y to the 8th can come out. Divided by 2, it's y to the 4th. And the 1 y has to stay in, because you can't take the square root of y. All right, let's try this other one, number 10 over here. Square root of 324. Whew, 324. Well, let's see first. 324, is that a perfect square? It is. Wow, that's 18 squared. All right, we didn't go that far. We only went to we only went to 11. So the first thing we checked, we found that 18 times 18 is 324. So that's going to come out right away. 
18 is going to be out front square roots of let's change this to be square a squared a b to the sixth b it's supposed to be an a it's kind of look like a nine erase that tail all right a squared times a and b to the six times b so that means it's 18 a squared is just a b to the sixth is b to the third Square root of a b. So 324 was a perfect square. It's 18. And then a squared can come out and b the sixth can come out. Leaving one left over. Let's do one with like a, uh, a fourth power one. Let's do just for the fun of it. Fourth power. And we'll do 32x to the 6th, y to the 12th. Fourth root, fourth root of 32x to the 6th, y to the 12th. Well, look at this, 1, 1681. 32 is not in there, but 16 is. So we can rewrite this as the fourth root of 16 times 2, because that's what 32, we could rewrite it. This is the fourth root. x to the sixth, we can change it to an x to the fourth, and an x squared, that would be longer. That's x to the sixth. y to the twelfth, we'll just leave that, because that is a multiple of 4. So this equals... What is 16? 16 is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. So that comes out front. x to the fourth. 4 divided by 4, that's just an x. So this has come out and that has come out. y to the twelfth. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that's y to the third. y to the third times itself four times so is y the 12th so that came out so that's all that can come out what's left inside is there's a two and an x squared so there's an example of a fourth root problem using variables 32x to the sixth y to the 12th simplifies to 2xy the third times the fourth root of 2x squared What fun, huh? What fun. We're going to get in this next week. We're going to get into adding radicals, subtracting radicals, multiplying radicals, and may even venture into some exponent two radical stuff. Uh, haven't decided exactly how much we're going to cover next week, but we'll get into some of that as well. So, all right. If you're behind on assignments, if you haven't taken the quiz yet, you need to do that. The assignments before the quiz. If you haven't done those, do those before the quiz. Make sure you get caught up on everything. And uh, like I said, formative is not very good at grading, especially if you are writing equations in there. So I have to go and manually check every answer it says is wrong. And I'll make a comment if it's really wrong. Otherwise, if it's correct, I'll just give it the points and then we'll move on. So any questions that we need to cover before we move on? All right. Well, if there's no questions, then it's Monday. Go see if you can fight through the jungle. <laughs>